Let's start with Drew Aller. Aller, the starting quarterback, gave us a decent, gave Penn State a decent season. Gave, gave Penn State an okay season. I mean, he didn't turn the ball over. I know he had the two turnovers in the Peach Bowl here, but 23 touchdowns to one interception entering the game. Protecting the football isn't just going to get you by. It, it's not enough. This, this, your five-star quarterback essentially operates as a game manager, and that probably doesn't sit right with a lot of spectators, especially Penn State fans. And it certainly doesn't sit right with me. My thoughts on Drew Aller. Is he the problem? No, he is not the problem but we can also be critical of him at the same time. Let's talk about the positives before we try to tear him down, right? And I'm not I'm not here to I'm not here to do that, but let's let's criticize, let's analyze his performance over now that we have a full season of him playing Division 1 football at the Power 4 level. Arm strength, mechanics, footwork, pocket footwork, pocket presence, all of that is there. All of that or what probably had him as a five-star quarterback, aside, aside from, you know, he's six foot five, he's 240 pounds. The way that these recruiting rankings are made is basically it is an early look at how you project as an NFL draft prospect. That's what that is. Do you ever notice how the top 32 players are always five stars in these rankings and why there's only 32 of them? How many first round picks are there in every, every NFL draft? 32. So that's what they're saying. They are saying with these recruiting rankings that you are an NFL draft. You would project as a first round pick in the NFL draft if everything goes well, because Drew Aller has a rocket for an arm. Are some passes inaccurate at times? Absolutely. Decision making. I don't think it's a little questionable. I think that wide receivers uh, and the timing is off and I'll have more on the wide receivers uh, soon enough in, in this show. But I look at the other things, the other intangibles, because he does know how to protect the football. He can throw it 70 yards without, without hesitation. He does put it on a rope whenever he needs to fire one into a tight window. Footwork, pocket presence. For a guy who's six foot five, 240 pounds, and the way that he's able to just outmaneuver a defensive lineman for Ole Miss, those, uh, those freakish athletes for Ole Miss's defensive line, and he's just able to get around them, that it oh he's a statue no he is not for somebody that's built that size and the way that he moved in this game was pretty impressive where does drew aller lack and why is he limited it's mental toughness drew aller from what we've seen is not mentally tough a and it's a it, football is just as much physical as it is mental or maybe i have that mixed up mental as it is physical in this case so for drew aller I don't think he needs to work on arm strength, accuracy, footwork. What he needs to work on is being mentally sound, not being so. And he's admitted this in interviews. He's admitted this saying, you know, I think I look too much back at the mistakes or I, I don't maybe trust myself enough. No, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. These aren't exactly direct quotes, but they're implying that, yes, sometimes he does hesitate when he really shouldn't because all the physical intangibles are there. And sometimes he really gets down on himself after a bad performance, a not so good one, and doesn't really respond that the way you would want your quarterback to. When you are the quarterback, you have to be an assassin. You have to be mentally tough. And that's why Sean Clifford was, for what it's worth, he was good enough. Was he great? No. But Sean Clifford, the way that he was always to stay close into football games was because he didn't let, and he was thrown the kitchen sink as far as criticism, as far as fan support, and he was able to take that. Drew Aller, the answer for him is personality classes, maybe, or, or something, a, a motivational speaker. I'm not sure, and I, I don't want to put, I don't want to joke about this too much, but it takes the pain a little bit away because I would have liked them to win this game against Ole Miss. I really would have. However, Drew Aller does need to focus on maturing. He's intelligent. He's going to fix some of these issues, I would hope. But that's really, I would go all, all intensive on figuring out how to make sure that you don't carry these things over when you are a true junior, when you're probably going to be in line to be a captain of this team next season in 2024. You're the returning starting quarterback. You have to be mentally tough. It is not about his mechanics. It is strictly about how he is processing the game internally, not in the playbook, not in the film study, 
how he sees himself in the game. And I'm not a psychologist and I, I shouldn't have to pretend to be one here, but you just have to be stone cold. And in Drowler's case at this point in time is not. And that is my only criticism of him because I think all those skills are there. And if he can correct the mental aspect of it, he can be really, really good. But how can you judge that in an Elite 11 camp? You're not going to know that until you are in a game type of situation. Not a backup, not a true freshman that comes in in garbage time or when Penn, when Penn State's up by 40 or trailing by 40. In games like this, when you are down by two scores, when there is ample time to come back, and this is how the team performs. Should Bo Prabula be the starter in 2024? No, he should not. <laughs> no, he shouldn't. There is a reason Drew Aller is still quarterback number one, despite everything. Penn State went 10-3. and three. It's not like this team finished 6-6 six and six and barely made a bowl game. They were in a New Year's Six Bowl. Okay? So for the shortcomings that Drew Aller does have, Bo Prabula doesn't have enough to overtake Aller in a quarterback competition. And the coaches see these two guys go head-to-head -head every single day, and they make their assessment. There's a reason that Bo Prabula is not routinely throwing passes when he is in on these gadget plays and trick plays. We saw Bo throw two passes in the Peach Bowl. And one was accurate, but didn't exactly get to Nicholas Singleton in time. And Singleton was able to maneuver enough and get to the end zone. But it's not like that one was delivered with authority and it was a perfect strike. No, it was a lob that got there with enough time. The coverage was totally broken down, and Nicholas Singleton should have been down where he caught it. He's just athletic enough to beat the coverage and, and take it in for six. And then Bo Prabula in the trick play and the throwback to Drew Aller. Does anybody remember that one? I certainly do, because Bo Prabula, with nobody covering Aller, just threw it over a six-foot-five player's head, and Aller had no chance to get it. And I know Aller's not a wide receiver, but that was maybe a 10-yard pass and you sail it out of bounds for a negative 12-yard play? There are reasons why Aller was quarterback number one for the whole season and Bo Fribula was used in trick plays. And when we saw him in trick plays, he was primarily used as a runner. Okay, It's just this dynamic now of Bo Fribula has to work on Throwing capabilities, we need to see more. We only have a small sample size, but what we've seen, Drew Aller is a much better passer than Bo Fribula is at this point. But flip it over, flip the conversation. Who's more mentally tough? Probably Bo Fribula, but we haven't seen him in a 12-game schedule. We haven't seen, other than Rutgers, that was Rutgers. We didn't see him take the game against Michigan or Ohio State. Hindsight's 20-20, maybe you put him in. I'm not sure. Drew Aller's still my starting quarterback. If both of them, Ethan Grunk, Meyer Jackson, Smolik, all those guys in the quarterback room next year, Drew Aller is still my starting quarterback for Penn State. Okay, that's that's without a question. I don't need to debate that. I will have more, I promise you, on the wide receivers, but I want to make this about Drew Aller in the quarterback situation. The wide receivers do not, were not, and have not been open all season. They just don't get open. So some a quarterback who already has some confidence issues throwing to wide receivers that aren't routinely creating any separation, and you mix, you mix these two together, and it's not going to go well. Play calling. Inconsistent all season. You, you treat it again. You treated your five-star quarterback. So no wonder you have to put some of this on James Franklin. You have to put some of this on Mike Yersich as well. Someone took the fall, and that was Mike Yersich. I'm sure every, I'm not looking at the comments right now, but I'm sure that everyone's saying, oh, this is all James Franklin's fault. But as the head coach, as the CEO that we've talked about as the appropriate term here, you need to find a way to fix this, amend this. Because why is your five-star pocket passer a game manager? I get that the defense was as good as it was, and you could rely on that, but it was only so good. It was only 10 and three good. Because you couldn't beat Michigan with it. You couldn't beat Ohio State with it. But it's not the reason they lost to Ole Miss. That's going to be in the upcoming segment of why they actually lost to Ole Miss. But remember, you also changed offensive coordinators and quarterbacks coaches in the middle of the season. So everything that the quarterbacks were used to, including Drew Aller, all went away mid-season. Later on in the season, I get that when things, there weren't as many stakes to play for here. But Mike Yersich was coaching them up 
for the longest time for the past two seasons, and then you have to undo all of it to finish out the season? That doesn't make make for a good situation. Maybe Franklin and whatever staff that he has just can't scheme for a pocket passer. Maybe that's just what it boils down to because we go back to 2014, 2015, when it was James Franklin, John Don. Because here, I see deja vu here. Just, just hear me out. Christian Hackenberg, first season starting under James Franklin, even though he, right, different, different, completely different situation. But just look at the deja vu. It's weird to me. Christian Hackenberg, first year starting under James Franklin and John Donovan. Boom, offensive coordinator is fired. They bring somebody else in. And then Christian Hackenberg doesn't stay with Joe Moorhead, but do you see, you see what happens here, right? And then Drew Aller, Mike Yursich, first year, Starting under James Franklin, pocket passer type, and the offensive coordinator goes, I know the circumstances were completely different, situations were different, scholarship counts were different, but it's just an odd similar timeline for pocket passing quarterbacks at Penn State starting for the first time under James Franklin. It's just a, it's just a little peculiar to me. That's all. I, I thought I would point it out. But I don't think that's it. You can't you can't exactly analyze it that way. It's not just, well, James Franklin will never get the best out of a pocket passer. It's just not the case. In 2014, 2015, Penn State did not have an offensive line. They did not. Whatever they put together those seasons was not anything relevant to what an offensive line actually is. That's the main reason why that did not work out with Christian Hackenberg. The main reason here, there was not a Jahan Dotson. There was not a Chris Godwin. There was not a Deshaun Hamilton. There was not a KJ Hamler and Allen Robinson. Drew Aller didn't have any of that. Did not have any of that. And look, look how it translated. Teams were allowed to sell out to stop the run. Parker, I'd even lump Parker Washington and Mitchell Tinsley in that conversation because Penn State was able to do it last year. Penn State's offense was so much more exciting a season ago before the Injuries, of course, right? Parker Washington get, did get injured in the middle of the year, but put up 150 plus yards against Ohio State. No semblance of that anywhere on this team this season. Drew Aller is missing a primary target. Tyler Warren's a stud, and that's great that you're having him back, but this is going to be the perfect transition into the next segment. This was not a Drew Aller problem, and part of it's a play calling situation. Part of it is a play calling problem to an extent, but when your wide receivers can't get open, that is an issue. And I think Penn State needs to overhaul the wide receiver position going into 2024 if they want to have a chance to be competitive in this new look Big Ten conference. <laughs> 